And this is a small member of the Toucan family. Our first guest today is Chavez, the Crimson Rump Toucanet, one of four animals the Earth Rangers will present to students today. Chavez isn't much of a flyer. In his natural habitat, he prefers to hop. He likes to hop between the branches up in the canopy of the jungle, and that's why deforestation is such a concern for them. When those big open areas in the jungle, they don't want to fly across them. A nice long beak allows them to reach food that other birds might not be able to access, because often those insects and things are hidden away in cracks and crevices. The second guest today naturally draws a few oohs and ahs. After all, Hugo is a striped skunk, but alas, he has been dissented. The students love the fact that in the wild, Hugo's mates will give you three different warnings before they spray. And if they get scared, they can spray a musk that is so strong, as people, we can smell it for over a kilometer away. They can give you warnings before they spray you, because that'd be terrifying, very terrifying. And I like skunks, because they give you chances to go away, or if you don't want to listen. The skunk can do a, a handstand. And... <laughs> and if you get closer, it might spray. They can reach speeds of 320 kilometers an hour. The third animal is Katiri, a peregrine falcon. This species is a real success story after being decimated by the insecticide DDT. Human intervention with a ban and recovery program enabled the birds to avoid extinction. So she is a great example of how people working together can make a huge difference it's the best message we can give kids. I think as well, letting kids know that they can make a difference is, is huge. I mean, a lot of the times they think that they can't. Our final guest today is Leonard, an American kestrel. This bird of prey is the smallest and most common falcon in North America. He is very quick, so watch very carefully. So we're going to see if Leonard wants to demonstrate how he might catch a butterfly in the wild. Now in the wild, they will either punch it out of the air and then come back down and land on it, or they will just grab it and take it right to the ground. I thought it was very interesting how they um, showed its personality. It was very fascinating. I like how it swooped down and got the butterfly and then it just swooped back up and then attacked it. <laughs> Each school year, the Earth Rangers visit around 40 schools, reaching over 12,000 elementary students in schools across Canada. The Kids Conservation Organization's goal is to educate children about biodiversity and inspire them to adopt sustainable behaviors. Joining Earth Rangers is another way where they can become directly involved in protecting animals and their habitats. When you become an Earth Ranger, you can complete missions, which are fun activities and challenges that you and your friends and family can do at home or in your community, at your schools as well. There's no obligation to fundraise, but in order to become a level six Earth Ranger, you would complete a fundraising campaign uh, to help protect one of our animals that we've chosen for that year. Well, I learned to keep the environment clean, so it helps keep the animals in, alive, because if you like throw garbage and stuff in the ocean or lake, then a fish could like swim into it and choke itself.